This is Top 30. Coming up, we look at the effects of yo-yo dieting. Airports now have therapy animals for stressed out travelers. And this young man is the first athlete with cerebral palsy to be signed by Nike. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to the show. I'm Kristen Smith, and here are 30 things you need to know right now. First up, the average new vehicle loses about half its value after five years, but some lose a lot more than others. In a new study, the research firm IC Cars found that trucks and SUVs depreciate less because their popularity keeps prices high. The two vehicles that lose the least value after five years are both Jeep Wranglers, with the four-door unlimited model coming out just ahead of the two-door version, with about 27% depreciation. Toyota took third place with its Tacoma pickup, as well as fourth place with the larger Tundra. But electric vehicles and luxury cars lose far more value. The two top spots were for the Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Volt. Both lost over 71% of their value. The researchers say EVs become outdated quickly and only the first buyer is eligible for government incentives. Six models in the top 10 are luxury cars from BMW, Mercedes, and Jaguar. That's because luxury rides are often leased, meaning a surplus of three-year-old models on the used market. Okay, now let's go to the New York Stock Exchange for our Fox Business Minute with Deidre Bolton. Deidre, it's getting more expensive to finance a home. That's right, Kristen. Mortgage rates rising past 5% on Wednesday. That is the first time since 2011 that the average 30-year fixed rate has topped that mark. Increasing mortgage rates are a sign of a healthy economy, but analysts fear the increase will hurt the housing market. Hershey's combining two of its most iconic brands, putting Reese's Pieces inside its Hershey's chocolate bar. It should be on shelves nationwide by the end of November. It is expected to cost about a dollar. And you will soon be able to shop at BJ's Wholesale Club without a membership. The bulk retailer holding a three-week promotion where all shoppers can enjoy the chain's benefits with no fee or commitment. So when does the promotion start? Monday, October 15th, and runs through November 4th. All right, good to know. Thanks, Deidre. Let's go to Danielle Knox now from Fox 35 Orlando. She has what you need to know today. So Danielle, I hear dogs might not be as smart as we think. Hi, Kristen. Well, a recent study suggests that dogs are no more exceptional than any other animal when it comes to intelligence. Say it ain't so. So how did researchers get to this conclusion? Well, they compared dog cognition with other groups, including wolves and cats and chimps, dolphins, horses, and pigeons. What they found was that dog cognition, quote, does not look exceptional. What does make them special, though? Dogs are more affectionate than most other animals. Oh, and one of the main researchers we should add here behind the study admits that she's a cat person, so there's that. Well, if you didn't receive many cards this year, it's likely because fewer people are actually buying them. According to the National Greeting Card Association, in 1995, Americans bought nearly 3 billion holiday cards. Since then, that number has dropped significantly, and researchers say that's going to continue to decline over the next five years. And just in time for Halloween, the popular Netflix show Stranger Things is out with its own candy line. The creators made sure to include the show's storylines in the treats, and so there's a gummy version of Eleven's favorite food, waffles. There's even a polywog gummy and a missing bar malted milk ball carton. Uh, for now, though, you can only buy the candy at its sugar stores. And that's what you need to know. And I got to tell you, Kristen, I am a Stranger Things fan, so I am in. What about you? Well, it's definitely on my watch list, and I'll never turn down a sweet treat. Thanks, Danielle. Okay, some headlines for you. The CDC has just issued a report estimating 100,000 young children have not been vaccinated against any of the 14 diseases for which shots are recommended. Doctors at the CDC are concerned because the population of unvaccinated children is small but growing when it should actually be reducing. And Kanye West delivered a performance that dropped some jaws during his visit to the White House to meet with President Donald Trump. Trump. The artist gave a rambling, multi-part monologue that was more like a rant, touching on various social issues and, of course, politics while backing President Trump. Trump even seemed to pause to acknowledge the oddness, saying that was quite something. And finally, Nike has just signed their first professional athlete with cerebral palsy, and the video is nothing short of heartwarming. Justin Gallegos is a runner on the club team at the University of Oregon, and he had just finished a race when Nike's insights director surprised him with a contract.
All right, let's go to Carrie Lake right now from Fox 10 Phoenix. She has this week's life hacks. So Carrie, good to see you. What do you have for us? Hey Kristen, in today's life hack, we start with the first life hack and we're talking hard boiled eggs. We love to take them. They're a great little healthy treat to have, but sometimes the peel won't come off. They just don't work out. Easy trick, put the eggs in a pan, cover with cold water and put a teaspoon of baking soda. That'll help you make sure the peel comes right off. Then the simple part, you boil it. When it comes to a boil, put the lid on, turn off the oven and wait 10 minutes. You have perfect hard boiled eggs. Next, when you're making stuffed peppers for dinner, you put them on a cookie sheet and they inevitably slip over and make a mess. So we've got a solution for that. Use a cupcake pan instead and they'll never tip over. And finally, everyone loves an ice cream cone, but nobody likes it when the ice cream drips down your arm. So here's a solution for that. The life hack involves taking a little marshmallow and dropping it in. You can even do two if you want. Then put the ice cream in and you won't have to worry about ice cream on your arm. Kristen, back to you. I love that last one, especially great for the kiddos. Thanks, Carrie. Now to an amazing story. It had been almost a year since University of Notre Dame's engineering group, Enable, began searching for a child in need of an artificial hand. The Enable group was formed specifically to create 3D printed hands. In February, Michael Skinner, an engineering student at Notre Dame, called for an Uber and was picked up by Doug Anderson. Michael asked about Doug's family when Doug told him about Tori, his adopted daughter from China who was born with half a palm and only one finger on each hand. The Anderson family searched for prosthetics for 11-year-old Tori, but most hospitals said they weren't willing to make any for Tori because she would quickly outgrow them. In fact, some hospitals told the Anderson family there was no need to get her prosthetics because she already had adjusted to life without them. Well, Tori met with the Enable group in March to see a complete prototype of what the artificial hands would look like. Tori chose purple for her palm color and blue for her fingers. Upon completion, the first thing Tori did with her new hands is shake her dad's hand. Then she fist bumped the Notre Dame students. Michael says the serendipitous meeting happened because he didn't wear a tie to his formal event, forcing him to leave early. Things happen for a reason, I guess, he said, all because I didn't wear a tie. Well, still ahead, we'll talk about why millennials are killing American cheese. And are Kylie and Travis trying for another baby? Don't go anywhere. Top 30 will be right back. Welcome back to Top 30. Many of us have tried to lose weight in a hurry, but when the number on the scale fluctuates, so does our blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugar. And those changes can be harmful. So joining us now to talk about it is Dr. Suzanne Gilbert-Lenz. Always great to have you. Hey. So I remember getting married and I tried to lose a lot of weight really fast. Right. It's very common, but there's some risks involved. Absolutely. So the problem with rapid weight loss is that it is read by your body as a stressor. So cortisol in particular, which is sort of the alarm bell of the hormone system goes off. And that ironically leads to increases in these things that you were mentioning. This can you know, contribute to other major health factors like heart disease. In addition, you're a lot less likely to keep that weight off if you lose it quickly. And that yo-yo effect up and down mm -hmm. is also harmful. Okay, I can imagine. Is there a healthy way to lose weight quickly? <laughs> what a great question. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. The, the thing is, probably not quickly. And I don't want I don't want you guys to think that we're saying, oh, nobody should now lose weight, because some of us do need to lose weight. It's a matter of doing it sustainably. Uh -huh. And that is the harder work. That's the lifestyle changes. So th the confusion for people is that there's a lot of information out there. Eat this way, eat that way, do this, don't do that. There's no one size fits all response. You know, yeah. you've heard me say this before. Yeah. So the thing is, the way people lose weight rapidly is by restricting and you can't restrict forever. It doesn't work. Right. I think the way of the world right now is we always want a shortcut for of something. Of course. Like technology and just yeah. the way it it's is. It's normal. Yeah, but, but with it's our not health, workable. don't mess around yeah. with that. Always great to have you. Thank you so much. All right, how about this? Americans are paying more than ever to access cash that's already theirs. A bank rate study found that out-of-network ATM fees have increased more than 50% in the last decade. This is the 14th straight year they've gone up. The fees banks charge to ATM customers who don't have an account there has increased to an average of over three bucks per transaction. Some banks also charge their customers a fee for using ATMs at rival banks. That fee averages $1.66. That means 
means customers pay an average of $4.68 to use another bank's ATM. One reason is that until recently, interest rates have been at historic lows. Banks began looking for other ways to make money. Many have started charging for things that used to be free, like checking accounts. Bankrate also found that overdraft fees are the second highest they've been in history, an average of over $33. Another reason for the high ATM fees is that most banks aren't worried about irritating customers that don't have an account there. Okay, moving on. One of the biggest safety risks of riding a bike is making sure cars can see you coming. A new invention aims to solve this problem with lasers. The laser light core looks like a flashlight that attaches to the bike's handlebars. It uses lasers to project an image of a cyclist about 20 feet in front of the bike. That projection gets to intersections before the rider does and lets drivers know when a cyclist is in their blind spot. It can also work as a standard headlight in cities where they're required by law. The laser light core has met its funding goal on Kickstarter. The light was studied by London's transportation agency when it was used by the city's bike share programs. Researchers found it made cyclists about 32% more visible compared to an LED headlight. The light's inventors hope better safety will encourage more people to ride bikes. While more organizations are using support animals, including airports, this month the Petco Foundation announced it will attempt to raise $2.3 million for organizations that train therapy, service, and working animals. It's called the Helping Heroes Campaign, and some animals have gotten that title as special recognition. There's Jake, a search and rescue dog in California. There's Stryker, who supports an army veteran with PTSD. And then there's Zelly, a 12-pound house cat. Zelly works with her human companion companion at Denver International Airport. She's available for pets, purrs, and snuggles to anyone who needs a break from the stress of travel. She's part of the airport's canine airport therapy squad, or CATS. It's the largest airport therapy program in the country, with over 100 certified therapy dogs. But despite the acronym, there were no felines until Zelly came along. An airport spokesperson said, it's been great having her on the concourse, visiting people and making people smile. She's thought to be the first airport therapy cat in the country, but if the foundation hits their goal, she probably won't be the last. And now let's go to Brody Brown in New York City with our Us Weekly headlines. Brody, I hear Teresa Judice just got some bad news. That's right, Kristen. A judge has just ordered her husband, Joe Judice, be deported back to Italy. Joe is currently in the middle of serving a 42-month sentence in prison after pleading guilty with Teresa to 41 counts of fraud and failing to pay his taxes. Sources have told us that Teresa did not expect this and thought that they would make an exception for Joe since he has been in the country for so long. And sources exclusively tell us that Kylie Jenner and boyfriend Travis Scott are actively trying to get pregnant again. Kylie gave birth to her first child, daughter Stormy Webster, in February this year. A source told us that Kylie is now so happy as a mother and she's still able to do everything she wants to do and be present as a mom. Well, the Kardashian-Jenner family just keeps getting bigger. And fans were shocked to hear OC alum Misha Barton join the Hills reboot. But Brody, you've got even more inside info for us. Yes, Misha Barton wasn't the only one producers were eyeing for the revival of MTV's beloved show. A source told us that Kelly Osbourne and Catherine McPhee were also on producers' shortlist. Alas, neither Catherine nor Kelly will appear on The Hills Revival, nor will the original stars Lauren Conrad or Kristen Cavallari, but a source does tell us that Misha hopes The Hills will document her comeback and hopefully show her in a new light. Okay, thanks for the scoop, Brody. We'll see you next week. For more celebrity news, check out usmagazine.com. And don't move, we have more things you need to know coming up. Welcome back to Top 30. Have you noticed anything missing from your restaurant menus lately? Well, according to Bloomberg, you can blame millennials for killing American cheese. The article says one by one, American restaurants are abandoning the staple and just turning to fancier cheeses. Many food outlets are also turning to Asiago, Fontina, and Gouda as their advertised cheese to keep up with the trend. Bloomberg says millennials are demanding their cheese be made from ingredients that are recognizable and pronounceable and no problem ditching American for that cause. The FDA actually requires items like Kraft Singles to be identified as cheese product since it contains less than the required amount of actual cheese. 
BuzzFeed also put up a series of tweets about how happy millennials are about this report. So it looks like they don't mind taking the blame. All right, here's a cool story. Many drivers use Waze to navigate their way around busy traffic. Now the company is expanding, having launched a new app to encourage carpooling. Waze Carpool, which began testing in 2016, matches users with their perfect commuting buddy. Like a dating app, Carpool allows users to filter potential matches based on preferences like gender or employer. The app then highlights those who are closest or travel the same routes. For their part, passengers can rate their drivers based on cleanliness, punctuality, and more. To cover gas and insurance, riders are charged up to 54 cents per mile, the current reimbursement rate for business travel by car. While drivers are earning money, Waze doesn't want the app to become a money-making venture like Uber or Lyft, so users are limited to just two rides per day. Waze hopes the app will cut the number of cars on the road. Unfortunately, some studies show pooled services actually make traffic worse, but we'll see if Waze Carpool can change that. If you're looking for an educational adventure this fall that your kids are sure to love, nothing beats Washington, D.C. And Elizabeth Stanton from Popstar Magazine has all the details. Hi, Liz. That's right, Kristen. Autumn is a great time to visit our nation's capital. Washington, D.C. shows off its fall colors and offers a variety of events for visitors. Of course, touring the national monuments and free museums in D.C. attract visitors year-round, and fall is no exception. The White House draws a crowd, too, although it takes a little more work to see inside. You can contact your senator or congressman in advance with that request. Multiple theater performances hit the stage in October. There are lots of sports events and plenty of concerts to attend to. Kids will love the National Zoo's Halloween celebration, Boo at the Zoo, and for day trips, George Washington's Mount Vernon hosts its popular Fall Harvest Family Days. And for a blast from the past, less than an hour outside of DC, the Maryland Renaissance Festival will run a couple more weekends in Annapolis. It's a little something for everyone, Kristen. Back to you. Well, sounds like a great time. Thanks, Liz. In today's hometown stories, from Fox to Detroit, Roxy Shoup has had a tough year. Her husband passed away, that she lost her home of 60 years to an accidental fire. But after hearing Roxy's story, her community rallied around her, raising thousands of dollars through crowdfunding to give her a brand new mobile home. I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to meet everyone. <laughs> and just shake their hand and say thank you. Showing the impact a community can have when they come together to help those in need. In our next story from Fox 13 Tampa Bay, Tony Morahan started working for his Hillsborough County, Florida community in 1983. And since being named Hispanic Affairs Liaison in 1994, he's been responsible for establishing and maintaining relations with the area's Spanish-speaking communities. But after serving a crucial role in bringing his community together for over 35 years, he's retiring later this year. And now he's being named Hispanic Heritage man of the year. And in our final story from Fox 9 Minneapolis, among the thousands who raced in the Twin Cities Medtronic Marathon, one runner seemed to stick out from the rest. And at just 13 years old, Harrison Gibbs had more than just a goal of reaching the finish line. I'm raising money for a nursing home down in Guatemala. He cares about others. He has a big heart. He's the oldest of five children and is just a good kid. Harrison not only finished the race, but he also raised $10,000 for the Hospice Center in Guatemala in the process. A great story showing that you're never too young to make a difference. Welcome back. Co-working spaces are a major trend right now, and some restaurants are looking to the idea for inspiration and rent money. It's not out of the ordinary to see someone sitting alone at a table with their laptop at a restaurant, and as rent prices on commercial spaces soar, a new movement is on the rise. A co-working startup called Spacious has teamed up with several restaurants in New York City. They give up their lunch hours to host telecommuters, and these restaurants now have a side hustle that helps pay the rent. It's a smart idea when you think about it. These telecommuters need somewhere to work and the Starbucks fill up quickly and there's always open tables during the day at most restaurants anyway. Why not team up? According to recent data from a workforce management platform, co-working spaces have grown by at least 200% in the last five years. Experts think the trend of working remotely will only continue to grow, so it sounds like some restaurant owners are getting in on something good. 
Okay, if you're seeing an increase in spiders around you lately, know you're not crazy and know you're not alone. Regions of the U.S. that have experienced particularly heavy rainfall have also reported seeing a peak in spider population. The National Pest Management Association says it's typical to see a spider peak around the end of summer anyway. If we add that to the extremely rainy and warm weather, we get more flying insects like mosquitoes. And guess who loves to eat mosquitoes? Spiders. Chicago and the Midwest in particular saw heavy rains toward the end of the summer, leading to more mosquitoes, meaning there's an abundance of spider food. Although seeing more spiders may give you the heebie-jeebies, the National Pest Management Association says most spiders aren't even dangerous. In fact, spiders sometimes do the work of pest control by eating insects that actually can harm you. And that's it for today's show. Thanks for joining us. Here's what's coming up on the next Top 30. A common food ingredient is deadly to dogs. We'll tell you how to to keep your four-legged friends safe. Plus, go inside the latest royal wedding in our new royal watch and how this baby made history at just five months old. You can also listen to today's biggest stories on the Top 30 podcast. It's all coming up on the next Top 30.